very pleasant uh, day. Uh, there's a signboard, uh, giving the information signboard for Tom and Emer. Originally a Roman fort. Yet over there, uh, well, about a third of a mile away, is the crow flies. And, uh, nice little car park here, which I have to myself today. First stop, I'll just go and uh, see if I can spot the remains of a Roman amphitheater, which is just at the end, just about a, well, less than a hundred yards away. These uh, banks of earth, I think, were the uh, is the remains of the amphitheater. And, uh, there's another bank of earth over there, and there's a bank of earth there runs alongside the, the lane. Uh, so the remains are still here after, well. Uh, nearly 2,000 years since, uh, since they were built or constructed. This site, uh, the Roman port, that's been uh, pretty thoroughly explored by archaeologists. And uh, I think a book has been written about it. I did, uh, oh, two or three years ago, actually, I think, uh, spoke to someone who was quite an expert, happened to be here at the same time. Um, okay, the fort is directly ahead of me, about, well, just over a quarter of a mile away. Was here, since I was here uh, last, about six months ago, on a similar day to today, um, they've constructed these information boards. And the, the, this particular information board uh, says that what I'm walking on now is was originally a Roman road. Now that mound up ahead is actually uh, it wasn't it was the later construction, a Roman. Uh, castle, oh, well, not a Roman castle, a Norman castle. Uh, the, uh, the Normans and the Romans both had trouble, trouble with the, the locals. information boards are very informative and uh, so you have really uh, some idea of what uh, what you're looking at here this was quite, I think those earth banks were probably the remains of a of a wall this building here I think is uh, a long abandoned farmhouse uh, but uh, the one, I suppose the one interesting feature of it is this, uh, well, <laughs> quite uh, excellent uh, half that was built at one time. Now ahead of me is the, uh, that's been, we went to the trouble of actually reconstructing uh, part of the Roman, the original Roman building that went along here. That uh, would be the main defensive wall. And here's another information, uh, information board. This, uh, this Roman wall 
was actually reconstructed from uh, excavated uh, stones from the original Roman wall. And here is an original uh, an inscription dating back 2,000 times, 2,000 years. <laughs> Next, climb to the top of the the Norman uh, castle or the Mutton Bailey that uh, that was constructed by William Rufus, apparently, uh, to try and uh, maintain order in this area. And here's a. I'll do a circle of the. Uh, Martin Bailey, and there's a good view of Trouds Vineyard Lake and, of course, the now no longer uh, active Trouds Vineyard Power Station. Uh, so, it's quite really uh, quite a scenic spot. You know, I'm on the summit of the, of the, the Norman, William the Rufus. Uh, castle, which was uh, built within the, the original Roman castle, with that wall down there, reconstructed, encircled. There are no information boards up here, but, uh, so I'll, what I'll do, I'll just make a walk now from here, and walk down there, and about a mile or so over there, and then go back a, a, a quarry, a quarry lane. There's some, there's a working quarry still, uh, just over there. I'm leaving the original fort area, or I'm still in the fort area, but the the chief, uh, the chief buildings, uh, just. Uh, I'll be going down this track now, down to, uh, which eventually it's to the bottom of the, well, a stream, and, and then later, a farm. We have had a little bit of rain over the last few days, so, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, work to do, just, <laughs> Well, nothing serious to ford this uh, stream. Now, in contrast to the, the workings of 2,000 years ago, we have these uh, this line of pylons, and of course the nuclear power station. And there is talk of um, burying some of these uh, power lines on the ground to uh, to uh, return to the, the pristine uh, scenery of say a hundred years ago. There's some cattle watching me. Well, uh, suspiciously there's a side post inscription on this rock uh, I think the top top phase Dolgechi Dolgechi so then this must have been a, originally uh, before they built the modern roads must have been the actual the connecting road main road. Here's a rather welcome shady dell. Sh shady dell. Uh, but it's actually quite quite warm in the uh, there's a there's a little indication that uh, the original footpath has, has been changed to avoid the farm the farmers uh, well, the farmer's farm. 
uh, this is something I've come across before. There's a sheep that's got its head caught in that, uh, that wire fence. And really, there's nothing I can do about it because I'm liable to break my I'm liable to break my hand if I was to try to. Uh, they're quite powerful creatures up close. When this footpath was diverted. Uh, they made quite a nice little uh, set of foot bridges, which have probably seen better days now. If I have a chance, I might see if I can see see a farm, a farmer around to let him know about that uh, trapped sh trapped sheep. This is. Day. There's a couple of chickens, uh, and there's a herd of stampeding uh, cattle. They just don't like two-legged animals at all. There's another common sight in the country. Vast, vast quantities of old tyres. So I'll see if I can see someone in this farm and let him know about the... Uh, here's the farm and I'll go over and see if there's anyone at home. Well, I managed to inform an old, very old gentleman in that uh, farmhouse about the trapped sheep, and he said he will let the farmer know when he comes back. Now, here's a might be a slight problem. That uh, those cattle in that this field which I have to uh, cross. Now, those cattle look a bit restless. So, what I'm going to do is there's actually. <laughs> suppose, according to the Ordnance Survey, a right of way up here. But, uh, it does, it just means I have to, uh, retrace my steps. No sign of cattle in this corner of the field. And I think it is supposedly a right of way up to that stone wall, but I'll try my luck around along here. As you can see this is quite a quite an extensive field. Like a grass desert. And I can't see any cattle at this this section of the field. And there's the stone wall running along the top. And that's the, the path I'll be returning on. OK, I'll come to the end of this very large field. And here's the track. I should have come along, so it was a diversion, but no problem. It's pleasant walking on this grass. It's uh, not deep. It's the sheep, of course, keep it well cropped. Coming to the end of this actual track, which continues up there somewhere, and I'll uh, just go along here for a, to where a little stream comes down, and, and then have a break. And uh, there's a there's a nice moorland mountain up there. It's, uh, well, I think it'd be about probably close to a thousand foot climb from here, but, but there's no right away up it, so where I'll have a break. Just here. There's that moorland mountain. I'll be returning up there, up to the right. Uh, there's not much water in this stream, so should be no problem. No, no problem fording it.
break down there and you can see this very deeply rutted track probably caused mainly by water erosion but this this does uh, I think this actually attracts uh, motor motorbike scramblers as well do just pass me and they went just a bit over there somewhere uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if they're authorized to come along here there looks like a possible ascent route to the top of that well moorland mountain it's probably it's probably about a 500 foot climb but um, I won't do it today and over there of course there's the Rinox looking from the from the east this is a Saturday so there probably won't, won't be anybody working in this it's, uh, well I think it was one time a stone quarry I still they still do stonework there and then I think it's been around for some time there's, there's a lot of uh, slag there or, or tips stone, stone tips okay there's stone blocks and it's obviously still a going concern and uh, that uh, quarry there looks as though it, well, there must be more workings further up. That one looks as though it's no longer worked upon. But you can see the, the finished stone blocks. There must be machinery in here for cutting the, cutting the blocks to shape. That looks like yes. Here's the uh, another view of the uh, of the quarry and the extensive uh, tips or slags slag heaps and uh, old quarry buildings over there. And down there, I think, is uh, originally ran a tramway, and uh, he went right through the Roman amphitheatre. And that was back in the 19th century. Coming to the end of this walk. There's my isolated cottage. It's, uh, I, can, I, think I, see, I see someone there. It's occupied. Whether they're weekenders or live there permanently. And there's a, there's a lake. Uh, which... Uh, makes a nice change. The Roman fort, you might be able to see, it's not quite, uh, it blends into the background, but it's by that green field. And there's, uh, just a few yards away, there's, uh, you can see the remains of that tramway. They built it up where this stream comes out of this uh, this lake. This looks as though it's kind of infested with algae. There's the cottage, and in the distance there's the the quarry workings or the buildings. I'm coming to the end of this walk now, so I think that will probably might be the last shot trusty footpath sign showing that was a right of way and uh, where this uh, this is where the tramway came down there not uh, on the track on the right hand side and, and you see probably cut out a bit of the the amphitheater which as you can see quite clearly the raised raised banks of the amphitheater 